Dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to study the morphology of the mandibular second premolar. So what we are going to study in this short video lecture, we are going to study the chronology of development of the mandibular second premolar, the number of this tooth in various tooth numbering systems, and at the end we will discuss the landmarks that are associated uh, with this tooth. So watch this lecture till the end. So the mandibular second premolar, the initiation of calcification, it begins by the age of around two and a half years. The crown, it is completed by the age of six to seven years, and the tooth, it emerged into the oral cavity by the age of 11 to 12 years. If you add plus two, then it is the age of the root completion. So the root completion, it occurs around the age of 13 to 14 years. Now, what is the number of this tooth in various tooth numbering system? So these are the second premolars. This is the second premolar of the left side. And this is the second premolar of the right side. So the number of this tooth, the left second mandibular premolar is 20 and in a clockwise direction. The number of the mandibular second premolar of the right side is 29. Now, in the palmar notation system, this is the central incisor, lateral, canine, first premolar, and second premolar. So, for the right quadrant, the number, this is a symbol of the right mandibular quadrant, and this is the number, 5. Similar is for the left side. This is the mandibular second premolar of the left side, and this is the number. 5 is the number, and this is a symbol of the mandibular quadrant of the left side. Now, in the FDI notation system, what is the number of this tooth? So, for the left mandibular second premolar, the number is 3, 5. In this system, 3 means the left mandibular quadrant and 5 is the tooth number. Same as on the right side. The number of the second premolar is 4, 5. Here, the 4 means the right mandibular quadrant and 5 is the tooth number. Now, what are the general features of the mandibular second premolar? So, in general, the mandibular second premolar, it resembles the mandibular first premolar, as you can see now in the picture. But the mandibular second premolar, it is slightly larger as compared to the mandibular first premolar. The root is also single rooted tooth, uh, while the root it is slightly larger uh, both mesodistally and in the length as well. Now from the buccal aspect, the mandibular second premolar, it presents a short buccal cusp. So the buccal cusp of the mandibular second premolar, this is the buccal cusp, cusp and the buccal cusp it is shorter and it is less pointed or it is less sharp as compared to the first premolar. These are the contact areas of the tooth. This is the mesial side and this is the distal side. So both the contact areas, they are more towards the occlusal surface and they are nearly at the same level. This is the root and the root it is broader mesiodistally as compared to the teeth that are present anterior to the second premolar. So for example, the first premolar or the canine. Now let's discuss the distinguishing features of this tooth from the lingual aspect. So the tooth on the lingual side, it has two cusps. This is the mesial side. And this is the distal side. So the tooth, it has two cusps. This cusp is the mesiolingual cusp. And this cusp is the distolingual cusp. 
The mesolingual cusp it is larger as compared to the smaller distal lingual cusp. The lingual cusp they are the lingual cusp they are larger as compared to the first premolar in which a single lingual cusp is there but it is very short. So in the case of the second premolar both the lingual cusp two lingual cusp are present and they are larger or they are longer as compared to the single lingual cusp of the first premolar. Due to the larger lingual cusp, little of the occlusal surface is visible in case of the second premolar. In between these two cusps, mesolingual and the distolingual cusp, there is a groove over here and this groove is known as the lingual developmental groove. Otherwise, the lingual surface, it is smooth and spheroidal. So the lingual surface, it is smooth. Otherwise, it is smooth and spheroidal. As compared to the teeth that are present anterior to the second premolar, uh, there is a convergence on the lingual side. But in case of the mandibular second premolar, uh, the, there is little convergence if you compare it with the teeth that are present anterior to this premolar. Now, in the mandibular second premolar, the crown and the root, they are more wider buccolingually. So this is the buccal side and this is the lingual side. So the crown, it is more wider buccolingually. And also in case of root, which is also wider buccolingually. So this is the marginal wedge or the mesial marginal wedge. So the mesial marginal wedge is straight or nearly at the right angle to the long axis of the tooth. So it is nearly straight. So if you remember the mesial marginal wedge of the first premolar, it, it has a sharp sl a slanting surface towards the cervical area. Now from the distal aspect, so the distal marginal wedge is present at a lower level as compared to the mesial marginal wedge. So this is a buccal aspect, this is a lingual aspect. So here you can see the distal marginal wedge, it is present at a lower level. And because it is present a little cervically, you can see all three cusps. This is a buccal cusp, this is a mesiolingual cusp, and this is the distal cusp. So all three cusps, they are visible. So they are visible. And because the marginal wedge, it is present slightly below, uh, therefore, in addition to these cusps, part of the occlusal surface, it is also visible from the distal aspect. Now let's discuss the occlusal surface of the mandibular second premolar. Two types of occlusal surfaces. One is a three cusp type appearance, which is more common. So this is a three cusp type. This is the buccal cusp, this is the mesiolingual cusp, and this is the distal, distolingual cusp. So this type of occlusal surface, it appear more square, while there is a two cusp type in which the distolingual cusp, this cusp, it is missing. So the tooth, it appears more oval in shape. Now, the triangular ridges, they are well formed. So triangular ridges, these are the triangular ridges that descend from the tip of the cusp. So this is a buccal cusp. So this raised linear elevation is a ridge. So this is a buccal triangular ridge. So this is the mesolingual cusp. And from this cusp, this ridge is the, from the mesolingual cusp, this is the mesolingual triangular ridge. And this is a distolingual cusp and distolingual cusp triangular ridge. So these are the three triangular ridges and these triangular ridges, they are well formed, especially the buccal and the mesial, especially the triangular ridges that are associated with the buccal cusp and the mesiolingual cusp. The occlusal surface, it is wrinkled 
and there are numerous grooves and these grooves they converge into a central pit and then from the central pit this developmental groove it continues towards the lingual side so it forms a lingual developmental groove so it forms a y-shaped pattern in a three cusp type uh, premolar that's why because uh, this tooth usually has three cusps that's why the term bicuspid it is not correct uh, for the premolars because the premolars it may have more than two cusps now just adjacent to the marginal ridges this is the mesial margin marginal ridge and this is the distal marginal ridge in this area there's a triangular depression and these triangular depression are known as the mesial triangular fossa and the one that is present adjacent to the distal marginal ridge in this area there's a depression and we call it as distal triangular fossa so this is a brief uh, overview of the mandibular second premolar if you have any questions do ask us in the comments if you have any feedback also write down in the comments again thank you very much for watching and stay blessed